you guys have caught me in my tomato jungle here, my tomato forest. And kind of what I did this year, and that's the cool thing about gardening for all you guys, especially if you're new, you know, don't knock yourself down if you, you know, you think you want to have this perfect garden, because I don't have a perfect garden. I just kind of do things that work for me. Over the years, I kind of find, you know, I don't have 100% of my time to devote to my garden, especially pruning my tomatoes. So this year, I decided to get cattle panels and an old fence. I made like a, a cage around my raised bed, stuck my tomatoes in there, and I'm not even taking the suckers off. I'm not doing nothing to these tomatoes. They're just in the cage doing their things. I'm going to see what's happening, and they're producing like rock stars. So you just kind of got to look and see what works the best for you. And today I'm in here and I want to talk a little bit about tomatoes because tomatoes are sort of like religion or they're also like politics. You have so many opinions about tomatoes. People always ask me, what is your favorite tomato? What is your favorite tomato? And from the very beginning, because I've tried all the different, different varieties of heirlooms. I've tried them all, I've tried to grow them. This has been the one that has grown the best for me consistently. It is the best tasting one, even when we've had droughts, when we've had a lot of rain, when we've had everything, a lot of pest load, even when they get blight, this doesn't seem to get blight as much for me. So this is one of the tomatoes that is always on the top of my list. I bet you're dying to know. So as you guys can see here, this is kind of a gnarly looking tomato. It's not the perfect round tomato. It's pink. It's a big tomato. It's what we would call a beefsteak tomato. So a lot of you may not know what that means. It's basically like a slicer that you could slice and it'll fit like your hamburger. It's nice and meaty. And this is a pink variety and it's an heirloom tomato. So a lot of you guys are like, what's an heirloom tomato? What's a hybrid? A lot of people don't know. I know a lot of you guys are new into gardening. And when we first started gardening, I'm like, what's the difference? You know, tomato's a tomato, but they are not just any ordinary tomato. There's a difference between having an heirloom versus a hybrid. And basically, a hybrid is one where you would go to a box store or a nursery somewhere and you'd get one and it'll say on the label that it's a hybrid. And it's where they have taken the genes of the tomato plant and they pick like the best genes. So ones that are high producers, high yielders, uh, they're more disease resistant, drought proof, things like that. And then they'll do great. They'll be rock stars when you grow them. Okay. And there's nothing against hybrids. However, they're not going to be the ones that you're going to be able to save the seeds and get that same plant year after year after year because they want you to keep buying them year after year. A heirloom variety, which this is a pink brandy wine. These are ones that have been around for hundreds or even thousands of years. They found them. People have kept them. They found them in caves. They found them in containers. So these seeds can be handed down. What happens with this tomato, I'm going to save these seeds of one of my tomatoes later in the season and then I'm going to use those next year. And then I'll save them again and save them next year. So for you guys that are wanting to know where your food's coming, to have that food security, that's what you want to do. You want to be raising heirloom type plants and tomatoes especially so that you can save the seeds. Because what happens with them, these plants get used to your environment. So right now, they're used to the wind blowing. As you can hear, it's kind of windy today. They get used to the climate. They get used to the humidity, if you have humidity, or the dew points high. They get used to the, the soil. They get used to all that stuff. And then that way, those plants are very strong and hardy plants, and you grow them year after year, and you don't have any problem. This variety here, the pink brandywine, it is my absolute favorite. I have tried many, 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 many different types of tomatoes here. This is the one I always grow and I never have any problems with when it comes to like having too much rain, not having enough rain, having good temperatures, having bad temperatures. I mean, this one always does very, very well for me. But it also could be because I started planting it from the very beginning and it has done well here. It's just a really hardy plant. And then, of course, it's the flavor. You also had you heard about some of them are low acid, some of them are higher acid. That's really not true. It's kind of like a fallacy. There isn't really a low acid or a high acid tomato. These tomatoes, and this is a pink one, and I always heard when I was a little girl, that's a low acid tomato. Well, it's not acid. It is higher in sugar. So these pink tomatoes, and it can also be yellow tomatoes, it can be orange tomatoes, it can be purple tomatoes, and of course these pink tomatoes, that means they're higher in sugar. So when you look at a red tomato, which most everyone likes to can and do things with like that, make sauces out of, 
That is a lower sugar tomato. Here's the one thing that a lot of people get mixed up with, any of them, purples, yellows, orange, green tomatoes, white tomatoes, any of the tomatoes like that, they all will can just fine. Just do the proper protocol when you're canning. You need some type of acid medium when you're canning, whether it be citric acid or lemon juice. So when you're canning, all tomatoes can be canned, all right? So this guy here, the pink brandy wine, is like the highest in sugar content, and it has a beautiful, it complements both like tangy and sweet together. So this has a, just like the most beautiful, beautiful flavor to it. So that's my favorite. All right, so we're learning a little bit more about tomatoes today. So I wanna show you something. Look at the leaf of this brandy wine. See how big it is? Really full. Does that even look like a tomato leaf to you? Now I'm gonna show you just like any other kind of regular tomato. See these? See how much littler they are and they're more serrated like a knife, like a bread knife? So the leaves of the brandywine, they call them like a potato leaf. They look just like a potato. When you first grow them and they start to sprout, you're like, is that a tomato? But they're the brandywine. And even the way they feel, they're much more smoother. Then we have any other of the tomatoes, they're a little bit more fuzzy on them. And you know, here's the one thing that when I started growing these, it was like a game changer for me. I'm really sensitive to the plants. I know a lot of you guys might wear long shirts or gloves when you're working with your tomatoes because you kind of get itchy. You kind of get irritated from them. There's some reason that these brandy were like, I can touch this and this isn't gonna bother me. And I could already feel the sticky stuff and how it feels on me on the other tomato plant. Well, these don't bother me as much, so I don't get that reaction as I do with all the other tomatoes. So that's another reason I like these brandy wine. You guys need to know what you're gonna do with it. So I am going to show you, ooh, look at that guy. An amazing recipe that'll be healthy and delicious and satisfying for the whole entire family. back in the outside kitchen and I kind of want to know the inspiration for this recipe is because a few videos back I did a video on the easiest tomato sauce that you will ever make in your entire life. You don't have to can it, you don't have to cook it, you don't have to do anything. You just cut up your tomatoes, put a little salt in it, let it set a couple days and there you go. Put it in the refrigerator and you will have a beautiful tomato sauce just like this. I just took this out of my refrigerator. Okay, I had the ones that I've been making down in our root cellar. Um, many were asking how long it will last, and it will last many months. But you know, usually I'll end up eating it. I've had some last up to a year. So it just depends. Watch your ferments just like you watch your canned goods that you have in your pantry. But this one I had in the refrigerator and I'm gonna use it on this recipe. If you don't have this recipe, go ahead and make it with your fresh tomatoes because it is the easiest tomato sauce you will ever make. So for this recipe, you're only gonna need your tomato sauce, some butter or some ghee or some extra virgin olive oil, some shaved, fresh shaved Parmesan cheese or whatever cheese you like, and some type of noodle that you like. I'm gonna use a brown rice noodle, but if you use lentil noodles, a regular pasta noodles, whatever you got will work, and that is it. And then of course, if you have some herbs, some basil, parsley, something like that to top it off, it'll be perfect.
what's a pasta dish without a nice salad? So I'm making a salad with some, some cucumbers and some peppers and some tomatoes, some spinach, some arugula from the garden, and of course we need to have a little basil. Did you guys know that there's over 10,000 varieties worldwide of tomatoes? Can you believe that? You guys didn't see the video that we did. I did with Terry Durham from River Hills Harvest. Uh, I think it was like the last video or so about all the different varieties of potatoes. We went and compared 18 different types of potatoes. Did you go know there are that many? There's more than that, but uh, 10,000 varieties of tomatoes, that's crazy. So now we're ready to go. I just need a plate. Quick, easy meal. All right, all you'll need is your, your pasta noodles. I like the brown rice ones. And then you're gonna add your extra virgin olive oil or your ghee or your butter. I'm gonna put my ghee on there. Sprinkle a little bit of my Parmesan cheese or your cheese of choice. I think this would also be really good with some goat cheese. Actually, I have some goat cheese. I think I might put it on, so hold on. And then, of course, my shake it sauce. Easiest sauce you'll ever make. So the thing about this one is, I'm not heating this up. This has not been heated up. It's filled with probiotics or good bacteria. So that's why I'm not mixing it all. So it's sort of like, this is the perfect pasta for a hot summer day because it's not gonna be like really hot and heavy on you. And then I'll put some basil on top of it. Put a little bit more Parmesan cheese. And I gotta make my salad too. So as you can see here, I'm using one of my old olive, extra virgin olive oil bottles and it was in the refrigerator. And you should be keeping your extra virgin olive oil in the refrigerator. You don't want them to go rancid. So especially with it hot out, you don't want them to be just in your pantry. So I would suggest keeping them in the refrigerator. So then I'm gonna put that on my salad. And you guys should be making your salad dressing. I always talk about it. You think you're eating healthy and you buy store-bought salad dressings? Well, you're not. Because they got rancid oils, they got artificial flavors, colors and dyes, they use high fructose corn syrup. All you need is two parts extra virgin olive oil, one part maple syrup, and one part of apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar, and that is it. It makes the most phenomenal salad dressing. So mix it all up. So we're gonna make a perfect meal for a very hot summer day. You know those dog days of summer? Oh, and then you know you talk, we were talking about tomatoes today, right? So tomatoes, those big beef steaks, the largest tomato was in Oklahoma. And it, one of these guys, seven pounds, 12 ounces. Can you imagine? That's a big tomato. What do you guys think? another glorious day besides making a wonderful pasta dish and a salad for lunch today. My Fermenting with a Smile recipe book. So it is here. So you guys have pre-ordered it. They're on their way. And then if you guys are interested in this book, you can go to offgroupwithdougandstacy.com because it's finally here. Yay. And I, I like it. There's a lot of good recipes in it. So you guys, there's things from honey ferments to vegetable ferments. There is recipes from my grandmother from the old country. I have so many different things, drinks, condiments, it's loaded up and it has lots of different sections and there's over a hundred recipes. 